Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an airline pilot and today I'm going to tell you a little story. Once upon a time there was an Airbus pilot who trusted the computers more than his own instincts and skills. Now you will say, hold on a moment, that is how a lot of accident reports start. And yeah, that's true. But on this one I want to show you something where the computer is not just a little bit of a problem, but where the computer actually shows you something that in my opinion could be outright dangerous. Now, the good news is that during the type rating on the Airbus we are actually taught that this happens and therefore we are able to circumvent it, therefore taking the problem out of the problem. But let me tell you what this is about. So we are about to take off on runway 23 left here at Düsseldorf Airport in the Fenix A320. At some point between 5 and 600 feet of altitude we are got, going to get an engine fire on the left side and an engine severe damage on the right side. Such a case could probably happen if you fly through a big flock of birds so that both engines get damaged. One catches fire but continues running, the other one gets damaged and shuts down. So in that situation the ECAM automatically applies uh, sequencing to the failures shown to you and a fire has a higher priority for the ECAM than a simple engine shutdown. For that reason, while one engine is completely dead and gone and the other one is just on fire but still running, the ECAM is going to tell you to shut the running engine down so that you end up as a glider. And this is what I want to show you in this video. So let's go ahead. Park and brake released. Give me a bit of thrust please. Take off. Manflex 59 SS Romney, auto thrust blue. Thrust set. One hundred knots. Checked. B1, rotate. You're up. Positive climb. Autopilot. Okay, here we go. Engine failure, engine fire. Now look at this. This is exactly what I meant. Engine number two is dead. And if you follow the ECAM, it's going to shut down engine number one. So at this point, the pilot simply has to apply... Okay, well, thank you for that, Fenix. So at this point, the pilot simply has to apply common sense and think about if it's really useful to shut down that remaining engine right now. Come on, autopilot. Speed, speed, speed. Well, flight dynamics on a single engine are a little bit interesting here. I had completely the stick in neutral and the thing started taking the nose up on its own. No comment on that. Okay, in any case, you see where this is going. We've got a little engine 2 fail. Come on, don't stop pitching up airplane. I'm not telling you to pitch up. My side stick is in neutral. I'm not touching it. Look at how it's constantly taking the nose up. That is not supposed to happen. In any case, you can see over here, we've got engine 1 fire, it tells me thrust lever 1, idle, engine master 1, off, engine speed, fire 1, push speed, button, push. Speed. Oh, come on, Fanix. Don't do that to me. Obviously, we are not going to do that. We aren't going to shut the only one remaining engine down. Instead, we'll try to keep it flying, and the fire will just have to, well, keep burning, and we just gotta hope that the engine is going to last until we completed our traffic pattern. And indeed, that is pretty much everything that we can do in this case. If you shut the other engine down, well, you better have a good field right in front of you. We don't have that in our case, so we are certainly just going to fly the traffic pattern. Okay, so, clear engine one, clear engine one. 
Clear auto flight. Clear auto flight. So, engine 2 fail. Engine mode selector ignition. Let's see. Maybe we can recover that, even though the N1 is zero. But the situation is dire enough. Okay. Thrust lever 2 idle. Engine 2 master. No, we are not going to shut this down. We'll keep it up. Maybe it restarts. I don't think so, since N1 is at zero. And that is normally an indication that the engine has a severe damage. Which it does, because I set the failure. But in this situation, what can we do? We need to bring the airplane back somehow. Okay, let's turn final. I don't want to be flying too long on that engine. Gear down. Flaps three. Okay, there is our runway. We can only hope that the engine is going to last now, because it is still burning. We go outside. We can't see it, unfortunately. But if we look inside, we can see the firelight is still on. Okay, auto thrust off. Completely. Coming in a little bit high. Let's take runway 2-3 right. Okay. Flaps full. Normally you do flap free landing on a single engine, but I need the airplane to get down and I don't want to use spoilers. Okay, that's better. Think great. 40, 30, 20, retard. And that is where the engine just about failed on us. Doesn't matter, we are on the runway. Let's go full braking. I keep the engine running for as long as I need the brakes. Brake set. Engine master off. Fire switch on. And fire that agent. Alright. And that's pretty much all we could do in this situation. With the engine with one engine dead and the other on fire. What the ECAM tells you to shut down the engine is definitely not what we are going to do. Ultimately, of course, if you see that the fire engulfs the entire wing, you know, if the integrity of the airplane is in doubt, then a glider is better than an airplane that flies on a single wing. But you get where I'm going with this, and you get why we are doing the things we are doing them. Okay, fire is still on. Agent 2, discharge. And with that, passenger evacuation, passenger evacuation. And that's going to be it, guys. That is how we would do this. Because there simply is no other way to do it. And the most important thing there, the lesson that I want you to take from this, do not blindly trust your ECAM, but rather go by, well, what kind of failures do you have? Analyze yourself. Don't just blindly trust the computer. Think yourself, and you might just about save your back with it. Alright, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching everyone. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do let me know. Do let me know what you think about this one in the comments as well. And finally, if you are up for more, then remember to subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching. If you really love what I'm doing, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. And in the meantime, I'd like to say thank you very much, and i see you all again on the next one.